Hello everyone. My name is Priyabhat Gupta. I am an MBA first year student from IIM Kachi. I am going to speak about the role of the Indian government and RBI in tackling coronavirus led recession. So the country is suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic and the people are undergoing 21 days lockdown and it has slowed down the wheel of economy which was already under a lot of stress and we don't know how many days the lockdown is going to extend. The figures released by the National Statistics Office showed India's economy grew at just 4.7% in the final three months of 2019. In India, up to 53% of businesses will be affected due to COVID-19. Various businesses such as hotels and airlines are cutting salaries and laying off employees. The live events industry has seen an estimated loss of rupees 3,000 crores. Supply chains have also been put under a lot of stress with the lockdown restrictions in place and lack of clarity in streamlining what is essential and what is not. Those in informal sectors or daily wage groups are the most at risk. A large number of farmers around the country who grow perishables are also facing an uncertainty. In the third week of March, a major than Flipkart announced that it would stop sale of non-essential items in India so that it could focus on essential del deliveries. Other fast-moving consumer goods companies in the country have significantly reduced operations and are focusing on essentials. Major companies in India such as l and Bharat Forge, Alta Tech Cement, Glassim Industries, Aditya Villa Group, Tata Motors and Thermax have temporarily suspended or significantly reduced operations. iPhone producing companies in India have also suspended a majority of operations. Young startups have been impacted as the funding has fallen. The stock markets in India posted their worst losses in history on 23rd March 2020. COVID-19 has not only crashed asset prices and stock markets, but also the real life and real activity. There have been times when stock markets have crashed because spe speculators were gaming the system. Someone accessed easy money by doing fraud. Someone borrowed too much or there was just an overextension of a cycle. This time there is no such manipulation or speculation. The problem is in the underlying real economy. As the number of COVID-19 patients are continuously increasing, there is a little doubt that we are going into a recession. And this is, recession is likely to continue till next year. The projections for world GDP 2021 have fallen below 2.5%. When production comes to a halt, this is the expected outcome. Businesses have been forced to stop operations. There is loss of production across the globe. This won't be a stop and start cycle because the real economy is so interwoven and interdependent. Imagine this. A restaurant shuts down. Its green grocery stocks go waste. Employees stop turning up for work. People are losing their income. They therefore cannot buy anything but only the essential. The businesses still must pay rent, power bills, and there is money logged into the stocks of dry groceries, which have not been converted into the final goods and sold. There is no revenue but only expenses and losses are mounting. The books are becoming weaker. The business needs working capital from banks, which in turn face difficulties with slow movement of money due to drop in supply and demand for money and credit. The employees who don't have income need personal credit to tide over. Since incomes are low for both people and businesses, governments earn less as taxes. There is less money in the system from lack of economic activity and that hits everyone. This story plays across sectors, across the economy, across the world. There are other factors also which are arguably, arguably not conducive to the growth of Indian economy and one of them is lowering oil prices. India's import bills, import bills fall by rupees 10,000 crore for every dollar drop in the oil price. If the average price drops by um, $25 per barrel, that implies a windfall of rupees 250,000 crores, and that is 1.1% of GDP. So the tax revenues could fall 10% below budget estimates. The budget hoped for rupees 2.15 lakh crore from this uh, investment, but the market crash will make it difficult to attain half of that much. The sale of Air India looks impossible. Auctions of toll roads, coal mines or railway routes will attract much lower bids. The revenue drought will mean less money for government investment at a time 
when private investment has frozen. GDP growth could plunge below 4%. The fall in tax revenue will send the fiscal deficit far above budget limits. Finance Minister Nirmala, Ms. Nirmala Sita Raman, should let that go, but not attempt any further tax cuts as a fiscal stimulus. A little bit can be done. A fall in revenue is automatically reversed as the economy re re recovers. But reversing a tax cut is politically difficult and should be avoided. RBI financed most of the fiscal deficit last year through open market purchases. It should be even more aggressive in the coming year. This will leave ample liquidity in the bank and keep interest rates low. The outbreak of the virus has placed tremendous power and responsibility in the hands of governments. This is not a problem that can be dealt with bottom up, but need specific guidance, orders and regulations from the government. There is evidence that authoritarian regimes have done better with compliance and control. Recovery will, cent uh, will be centrally driven. Uh, governments and RBI have, long, have a long road ahead. Now I will be talking about measures to tackle the recession. First, there is no choice but to bring interest rates down. And the government has already uh, bring the interest rates, saving uh, rates down by uh, more by less than 3%. Lower interest is expected to trigger demand for goods and services and revive economies. In a scenario where there are no goods and services to supply or capacities to create and expand, monetary policy loses its power. But keeping interest rates high is counterproductive at any rate. It would impede the flow of money and hurt recovery. We will see a concerted effort across the globe to keep interest rates down till economic activity revives. Second method, when the government asks people to stay indoors and not turn up for work, the responsibility of providing for those who lose their income is high and real. There might be no choice but to hand out money to the weaker sections who will face financial loan without income. There are millions of daily wage earners who have been put out of work due to shutdowns. There would be widespread layoffs, cutbacks, leading to eventual unemployment. Government must find the resources for handouts and borrow heavily since tax collections will have will have, will be dropped. And third step should be the fiscal stimulus is the only hope for early economic revival. Governments must bear the burden of debt and spend to revive economies. The other drivers of the economy, private consumption, investment demand, export growth will all slow down and take time to revive. Without government spending, the recessionary impact will be deeper. But the tax cut can't, can't be done more as it will deepen the fiscal deficit and it will be difficult to recover. Fourth step, the lending environment must ease. Coming at the top of a credit crisis in India and the near failure of a large private bank, it is tough to imagine the loosening of lending norms. But we may not have a choice. Even if the RBI brings interest rates down, banks will be able to lend to businesses only if there are extraordinary steps to enhance liquidity in the system. Banks uh, have got stricter norms for the NPS, so so this uh, so there uh, much can't be done. So what can be done is uh, is the lowering of the CRR, CRR and SLR and revisiting the provisioning norms. Fifth step and the last step should be the cooperation between economies will have to be reworked to facilitate global recovery. Economies that depend on world trade for growth will take longer to bounce back. The uneven stages of economic activity will mean that as China and South Korea are ready to return to production, UK and the European uh, and US and other European countries are falling into a low consumption and shutdown mode. India might be fortunate in comparison given the high level of domestic consumption and relatively lower dependence on external sector. But India will have to loosen its trade norms and should try to increase the in-house production and ultimately increase the export of goods and services. Thank you.